pleasure to have Coach Beamer, and he will go straight to questions. We'll go right here in the front with Rick. Hey, Shane. Hey, Rick. What do you know now about being a head coach that did, you didn't know one year ago when you came to SEC Media Days? Mm. You know, I felt like I learned a lot, Rick, before SEC Media Days, to be honest with you. Um, just from January until July last year, uh, realizing the impact that you have on everyone in the program, that all eyes are on you every single day when you walk in that building, that what I say in press conferences like this or back in Columbia uh, is going to resonate across the state and the region with the fan base. Just realizing that, that even growing up the son of a football coach like I did, you, you don't realize that maybe to the degree that it is. But then also all the things that come across your desk every single day that have nothing to do with football uh, that you deal with as a head coach, which I love that part of it, don't get me wrong. And then throughout the season, certainly um, – you, you, you learn. Uh, there's mistakes that I made during games. I mean, I can think the things from last year that I'm still kicking myself in the butt for the in-game decisions and stuff like that that you'd like to have back. But that's coaching, and you try and learn and, and be better going forward because of it. We'll go to your left, third row. Brandon Adams from Dog Nation. It's been suggested that the league might have to go to a nine-game conference schedule to keep some of those yearly rivalries in place each year. Would you be in favor of that, say, like a Georgia, maybe your biggest conference rival? Would you like to see the nine-game conference schedule so a series like that could be preserved on a yearly basis? I'm going to give you the politically correct answer. I mean, I see the positive in both of them. I really do. The, the, the positives in the eight-game schedule or eight-game eight conference schedule, I see the positives in the nine. And then I see what some people would say the negatives with both of those as well. I'm certainly a traditionist, traditionalist. I don't want to see uh, the rivalries like George Auburn go away and, and, and whatever it might be. And I think the rivalry with us in Georgia uh, is a rivalry. And, and I don't want to see that necessarily go away. Uh, I'm a, so I, I don't want to see that. But, you know, I'm also realize that we play in the toughest conference in the nation and it's only getting tougher with the two new teams coming into it. And we always want to do what's best to put ourselves in position to uh, play football beyond the regular season for sure. To your right, front row. Dick Cox with Dick. Lindy Sports and Cox Sports Broadcasting. Shane, it was obvious today the three that men that you brought to represent South Carolina did a great job. Can you talk a little bit about how tough a decision that was and what went into picking the three that you did? Yeah, you're right, uh, Dick. They're great, representati great representatives of our program, fantastic young men. I just sit it in the main room over there. The, the uh, uh, two of them are graduates. Zach will graduate in December you know, for us here at South Carolina. So they represent what this program's about on and off the field. They've played a lot of football for South Carolina. We've got a lot of deserving guys, if you will, that would have done a great job here. But Javon Gwynn is a returning captain for us. He was voted a captain last year as a, as a junior, which is not easy to do and is a great uh, accomplishment for him to have the respect of his teammates like he does. Zach Pickens could be in an NFL training camp right now. Uh, he was projected to go very high, but he believes in what we're doing as a program and wanted to come back. And then with the carry on, the, his story and what he's done as a player is fantastic. So that was an easy choice to pick those guys. There's some other ones that would have been very, uh, uh, very deserving as well that, um, you know, people like uh, some of y'all thought I should have brought Spencer Rattler. We'll, we'll bring Spencer next year, all right, when he's a senior. So. In the middle of coach, second row. <laughs> Why y'all laugh? <laughs> Anthony Patterson with the Atlanta Boys. Coach, um, Caleb Juju Madal, he obviously made a big impact for you guys this season. Um, what, how would you describe his progression, and what are you looking forward to this season as, as you go into this season? I love Juju McDowell. Um, I love his uh, competitive spirit on the field. I love his energy uh, off the field. And you're right, to come in and do what he did as a true freshman was really impressive. And, and uh, people that cover us regularly remember this. But to me, one of the biggest plays we had last season was at East Carolina in the fourth quarter. He has a 70, 80-yard kickoff return after East Carolina scores that totally flipped the momentum of that game after we were down 14-0. And then we ended up winning that game, going 2-0, and, and, and kind of springboarded us to um, – 
uh, a season, the season that we had. And so Juju was made an impact early. He's continued to get better and get stronger and have high hopes for him. Like our, our team is a better team when Juju's on the field. I know that. To your right, Coach, third row. What do you like about Spencer Rattler from a tangibles and intangibles perspective? And then what specifically do you look for from a quarterback, especially in the transfer portal? Yeah, as far as Spencer, you know, I like his – there's a lot to like. Um, obviously, the talent speaks for itself. But um, the thing that was really attractive about Spencer beyond the talent was just the fact that he's played a lot of football. And if you look at our quarterback room, when I was here last year, Luke Doty was our starting quarterback. And he had the most experience, and I think he had started three games as a college quarterback and was really a freshman still in my mind. So to be able to add a guy like Spencer who has the experience that he has, he's been through the fire before, he's won a conference championship, uh, was a no-brainer. And, and, and then as far as what we look for, you know, I think for the quarterback position, it's, it's accuracy, you know, first and foremost. You've got to be accurate. In today's time, you've got to be athletic enough to – get yourself out of trouble. That doesn't mean you have to be a Kyler Murray like I was around at Oklahoma or whoever, but you've got to be athletic enough to get yourself out of trouble. And then just uh, that, you know, the competitive spirit and the leadership qualities that you want uh, at that position. And, and from being around, Oklahoma, or being around Spencer at Oklahoma, uh, I knew he had what we were looking for. In the middle, fourth row, please. Uh, Beth Hull, uh, Fox oh, Carolina, Greenville. You have these guys coming back, so many seniors that chose, made the decision. Gwen told us the offensive line got together and kind of made that decision. What does that mean to you to know so many guys were invested in what you were doing last year? And what can you tell us about what, what it's really like that these guys would want to come back and, and be a part of this? No, nah, great question point. I appreciate that. Um, it was very gratifying and, and, and humbling when they told me that. I'll be honest with you, like going into the bowl game, I wasn't sure about Zach. Um, he may have told you otherwise. I think he was probably leaning maybe towards going out. Um, but to, to the month of December is kind of a crazy time. You're getting ready for a bowl game. You're trying to sign a high school recruiting class. You're dealing with the transfer portal, and you're trying to figure out who on your own roster is opting out of bowl games, who's playing in the bowl game, who is leaving early for the NFL. So there was a lot going on. And uh, I remember meeting with those guys like Javon and like Zach and some other ones that I knew had decisions to make. And, and it was a pretty cool moment when Javon, Gwynn, and the offensive line told me that they were coming back because they felt like they didn't accomplish what they wanted to accomplish and that they could be not only better players, but that they wanted to win more than seven games. But they also told me that they felt like they didn't do their job as leaders on the team last year. So that was pretty cool to hear. To hear. And then I remember we had the great bowl win over North Carolina. And, and uh, Zach and his mom, I think, were going to lunch the next day. And I remember driving in the car home from the facility. And uh, I think I got caught by train. You guys from Columbia will know that. And I was on the phone with him, and he was getting ready to go to lunch. And, and it's kind of like, whew, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that uh, he's going to make the decision. That's best for him, but, but hopefully he comes back. And when he decided to, that was a great moment as well. So it's, it's a testament to what we're doing in the program, that our players uh, saw last season what we're about, that it's not just talk, it's, it's actions as well, and, and that they want to continue to be a part of it, and they're, in, they're, in, they're enjoying it. And, and I told the guys down, the ladies downstairs and guys, like, I want this program to be a place. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's not easy being a football player here. It's hard work. It's demanding. You're held accountable. But I don't ever want our players to dread walking into our facility each day. And they don't. Uh, they, they look forward to coming in there each day, and that's because of the people that we have in that facility. In the middle, back row. Uh, yeah, Coach. Uh, th this is your third different stint, I think, in the SEC East now. How would you care? How competitive and deep is the East going into this season? I mean, you guys are on the rise. Tennessee, uh, Florida, new coach. Yeah. Obviously, the defending national champion. Yeah, no, it's getting tougher and tougher. Um, uh, really, fourth if you count my, tw my two times at South Carolina because I was a graduate assistant at Tennessee as well. So I was at gra I was a graduate assistant at Tennessee in 2001, two and three where. You know, you had Coach Rick had just come into Georgia and was building that program. And I was with Coach Fulmer at Tennessee, and Coach uh, Spurrier was at Florida. And there was no better division in all of college football. And then being at South Carolina with Coach Spurrier when Urban Meyer was at Florida and, and, uh, and, 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 and whatnot, and what 
we, what they were doing. And then now being back the second time at South Carolina, it's only gotten better. Obviously, uh, Georgia is at a level that they've never been at right now from a recruiting standpoint and just won the national championship. Uh, new coaches that came into the to the SEC East last season and the impact that they were able to make in year one for sure. New coaches this year, you know, that have uh, won at won at a high level, you know, at other places that they've been as well. So uh, I think there's great coaches and and this league is a great league from top to bottom and and there's no question that the SEC East um, is, is very strong right now and only getting stronger. Right here, second row, and then pass the microphone to the aisle, and then we'll finish over here. So, go ahead. Mike, uh, Mike you have a game cut central. Hey, Mike. Um, Shane, you know, whether fear or unfair, the offensive line took some scrutiny by some last season. You know, number one, how excited are you to be able to have all those starters back? And number two, something that was a little under the radar, but was reported last year, being able to have a healthy Greg Atkins knock on wood back and just the importance that he brings to the team as an offensive line coach. Yeah. Um, Certainly, when you return everyone on the offensive line like we did, I mean, that's a great uh, advantage for any program. And they've played a lot of football together. Uh, you know from playing football, like the continuity that you got to have on all, with all five positions, those guys, uh, they work well together. Javon and Eric Douglas and, and, and them, they've, they've had uh, – They've played a lot of snaps. So to have those guys back and to come back hungry. And they got beat up last year. And, and there were certainly, they'll be the first to tell you that they needed to, uh, needed to play better. A lot of you guys that were, were at some of the Gamecock Club events that I did in the spring, and I said this at every Gamecock Club, and it's true. Like, it's easy when the running game doesn't look good to blame the offensive line. And it's easy when the quarterback gets sacked to blame the offensive line. Well, it's not always that simple. You know, sometimes... The tight end may have missed a block or a wide receiver should have come in here and push cracked on the safety and he didn't and the safety hits the running back in the backfield for a, for no game. Or the quarterback gets hit in the back of the head, well, we may have been in a pass protection where we were only protecting with five players and the defense rushed six. Well, simple math tells you if the defense is bringing six and you only got five guys blocking for you, if you're the quarterback, you better get rid of the freaking ball. And that didn't always happen last year. So we got to be better as coaches coaching that up. Uh, but the offensive line is a lot like the quarterback. Sometimes I think it gets too much blame and too much credit when things are bad and good. Uh, but I, I love these guys on the offensive line. They didn't miss a single practice during spring practice, not one. So 15 spring practices, and we didn't have a single offensive lineman miss a practice for an injury or anything. So they're tough, they're durable, love that about them. And then to have uh, Greg Atkins back, I was with Greg as the offensive he was the off He was coaching line at Tennessee when I was a graduate assistant. He's got NFL experience. He's a great coach. Lonnie Teasley, who is an offensive analyst for us and, and is involved in our offensive line, is a fantastic offensive line coach in his own uh, in, in his own way as well. So excited about both those guys being back. In the aisle on your right. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Texas A&M has won the South Carolina's you know, cross-division games. What made playing against them so difficult? I need to go on like that Georgia rant that I had post game that still gets played on social media. Um, I got a bunch of really good players. Um, for one, um, oh, one that's a uh, that was a really really good defense. Coach Elko did a great job with that defense last year. Just up front, you know, the size and physicality that they had up front on the defensive line, uh, and then their defensive backs look like what you want your defensive backs to look like. Their, their defensive backs look like linebackers. And they're hard to throw against. Uh, they've got size. They've got length. They're well coached. Uh, not to mention that's a terrific you know, venue to, to play in and not an easy place to play. Uh, so there's a lot of reasons they were, they were tough to play against. And, uh, but they've got great players, and, and they're well coached. And um, that, was not a, that was not a fun Fun night. First time to college station for a game, so that was the positive, but that was a long night. Last question. Hey, Shane. Corey Miller, Fox, Carolina. Um, a lot of coaches don't like NIL. They don't like transfer portal. They don't like the Twitter aspect of college football today. Uh, you seem to embrace it. The video before you guys came down here was cool, blowing up Twitter. Um, you and Lane Kiffin leading the way in the SEC as far as coaches are concerned. How do you embrace and how do you deal with you know, that side of things and versus, you know, demanding them on the practice field and doing game days? Yeah, no, it's a great question, great point. You've played the game for a long time and know um, 
for me, it's just be me. You know, I think sometimes they become guys become a head coach, and there's a certain way you think you're supposed to act because you're a head coach in the SEC. And I was never going to try and be somebody I'm not. And and I meant what I said. Like it's not easy being a football player in our program. And our players would tell you, like, we work really, really hard, and they are held accountable, and we are very demanding. But we're not, we're not disrespectful. We're coaching them hard on the football field, but we're not disrespectful to them. Uh, they know that we genuinely care about them. We use the word love in our program a lot, and sometimes that may make people uncomfortable, not with us. Like, we use the word love in our program a lot and have no problem telling each other that we love each other. And... Um, uh, that helps us grow together as a team. And, and the more that we can showcase our program, there's some great things going on in our program. There's some great people in our program. And being able to uh, highlight them uh, on social media like we've been able to do, I want to for sure. And, and there's a lot of negative talk about name, image, and likeness. And certainly there's things that need to change and be better about it. But there's a lot of guys on our team, three of the guys that are here today, or the three guys that are here today that are using name, image, and likeness for the way that the law was intended. Uh, I mean, we got guys on our team that back in December took money that they had been able to bring in from name, image, and likeness and took underprivileged youth in Columbia on a shopping spree at Christmas so they could have Christmas gifts. Like, you don't hear about those stories as much as you hear some of the other stuff. So does it need to be better? Does it need, are there things that need to be changed? Absolutely. I'm not saying that. Uh, no one loves the way it is right now, but there's also a lot of stories of uh, the good that's coming out of it as well. And, and then, the, you know, to answer your question, for me, it's just be me and, and – uh, I know how blessed I am to be in this chair, and uh, I mean, I my, I was coaching at Mississippi State back in 2005, and my wife was working in media relations at Mississippi State, and the SEC media days were in Hoover, um, and she was there all week working. So I think she, we were engaged at the time, I think, but I drove, or maybe she was my girlfriend, I can't remember, but I drove to Hoover, and. Took her to dinner one night. I remember dropping her back off at the hotel thinking about, man, like how cool it would be one day for me to be able to be in that hotel as a head football coach in the SEC. And here I am. So I'm sure it's going to enjoy it. And uh, it's a high-pressure job. It's demanding. I get it. You're judged on what you do 12 Saturdays a year. And if you don't win football games, you get fired. But I'm going to have a hell of a time, you know, as long as I'm here at South Carolina and I'm having a blast right now doing it. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Thank you all for all you do. Have a great week.